name is Mauro Zapatera. Um, I have all my degrees up there. Um, I did my MD PhD at Harvard Medical School. Uh, and during that time, I also studied uh, polarity therapy, cranial sacral therapy, uh, and Reiki. So the RPP is polarity, the BCST is biodynamic cranial sacral therapist. Um, I now have a private practice in Pasadena, California, uh, where I practice physical medicine and rehab. And I also work with, uh, with veterans at the Los Angeles uh, Veteran Health uh, uh, System. The title of my talk is The Cerebrospinal Fluid and the Appearance of I Am. Uh, to me, the I am is that inner sense of beingness, okay? the inner perception of existence. Numerous artists have depicted our energetic bodies manifesting as physical forms. Many times there appears to be a swirling of energies or vortex. With a condensation or differentiation of energy from some source with a focal point in the brain. This presentation will be on the cerebrospinal fluid as what I believe to be a potential conveyor of the source energy to our physical bodies through which the I am is experienced. This talk was inspired by my love for the cerebrospinal fluid and a discussion I had one day with the organizers of this conference, Maurizio and Zaya, who mentioned this quote when I was telling them about the fluid by Nisargadatta Maharaj, an Indian guru of Advaita. He said, Fluids come together and the I am appears. Instantly, we sort of have that sparkle in our eyes that we thought maybe Nisargadatta may actually be referring to the cerebrospinal fluid. So what is the cerebrospinal fluid? The cerebrospinal fluid is a clear fluid that bathes the brain and the spine. You see it here depicted in blue. It occupies the cavities within the ventricles, within the brain called the ventricles which we'll get into more detail. It also covers the outside of the brain. It travels down the central canal of the spinal cord, travels down all the way down your spinal cord, all the way to lumbar vertebrae two. It also bays all the way down the outside of your spinal cord as well. What's interesting is that the spinal cord actually ends at L2, but the cerebrospinal fluid actually goes down the dural sac all the way to S2, all the way to sacral segment two. That's sort of what we would consider the root or the root chakra. So you're sitting on where the, where the cerebrospinal fluid would end. But if you put your hands on your hips, okay, and you feel your hip bones, that's L4. So L2 is just above that. So you can imagine the cerebrospinal fluid actually continues going down further than where the spinal cord ends. At any point, Every single one of us has 150 milliliters of cerebrospinal fluid in us at this time, okay? We make 450 to 600 milliliters of it a day because the cerebrospinal fluid, it needs to turn over, okay? So this is how much cerebrospinal fluid you're making in a 24-hour period. Interestingly, if you look at the model of the ventricles, this is a model of the ventricles inside your brain. Okay, so in your brain, you have these fluid-filled spaces that are filled with the cerebrospinal fluid. This is what it looks like. Okay, just take a picture of that in your mind's eye. So essentially, our entire central nervous system, the brain and the spine, is floating in and being bathed by this fluid. What is the role of the cerebrospinal fluid then? As you can imagine, trying to answer this question became my PhD dissertation at Harvard Medical School and has led me down a path of wonder, awe, and quite some amazement. It started, looking with this, uh, it started with looking at this slide. This is a section through the head of a human embryo at eight weeks in development. Okay? What you see here is the developing brain. So this is, this is the part that actually becomes your cortex, this frontal part here. I didn't know what this cauliflower-like structure was seemingly floating in space. So I asked my colleague, what is this? And he said, that's the choroid plexus. This actually makes CSF. Instantly I knew that if the structure that made the CSF was that large, that it had to have some important role. In fact, the entire developing nervous system is bathed in CSF. If one looks, for instance, at a section through a rodent brain, 
all the early embryonic stem cells, the cells that make up our entire central nervous system, are contacting the CSF. Here's a picture of essentially from early development on through late development, what you see these stem cells here contacting the CSF with a little cilia. It's almost like a little antenna, and it's constantly monitoring the fluid. Looking at an adult brain section, the stem cells also contact the CSF. Here you see a stem cell labeled B, almost sending like a little foot. It's got to send a little foot trying to contact the CSF. From our research and a lot of other people's research over the last few years, we can say that CSF provides essential survival and growth factors to the embryonic and adult brain, and that CSF provides a fluid niche for neural stem cells for survival, proliferation, and differentiation. So, essentially, from a biological molecular perspective, the information in the CSF, whether that information is a protein, okay, a hormone, a growth factor, or any molecule, is being conveyed to the brain via the fluid. We published an article in the journal Neuron, and we designed the cover image that was based on our vision of the CSF. What you see here is a continuum of blue from embryo to adult. This change in color can represent the changing proteins and growth factors from development to adult that we found. But the blue essence, that light of the CSF, this represents a continuum of energy within the fluid that is ever present regardless of age. If I had it my way, there would be a beginning coming into the embryo from source and then coming out of the uh, adult going back to source. But we didn't design it that way at that time. So the majority of the roles of the CSF that we know about today are that it transports nutrients and hormones to the central nervous system, regulates circadian rhythms, regulates appetite, provides guiding cues for cell migrations, instructs stem cells to proliferate or differentiate, creates an ionic balance for the brain, eliminates waste, supports and protects the central nervous system, and creates a buoyancy and shock absorber for the brain. Well, what else could it do? Here are two quotes by Dr. Randolph Stone, the founder of Polarity Therapy, a holistic healthcare system. He stated that the soul swims in the CSF. He also stated that the cerebrospinal fluid seems to act as a storage field and a conveyor for the ultrasonic and light energies. Dr. William Sutherland, the founder of Cranial Osteopathy, said this that his teacher said about, about how he envisioned the CSF. He envisioned the cerebrospinal fluid as an intermediary in the movement of a divine intelligence, a channeling of creation into embryological segments and irrigating them with life, giving form and function and order and intelligence to our existence. As a fluid, therefore, the CSF can be a sensitive receiver and transmitter of energy, vibration, and information. Just as flower remedies demonstrate that, flower, that water is able to absorb, store, and transmit the energy of plants, or as Dr. Masuro Emoto showed, that water could store the energy of words, so also the cerebrospinal fluid may absorb, store, and transmit the essence of the source and allow us to experience our beingness, the I am. As I mentioned, the CSF covers the outside of the brain, which you don't see here. Let's take a look at where the CSF is stored, though, inside the brain. It's stored in the ventricles of the brain, which you saw before. So these are the fluid-filled spaces. This is what it looks like as if somebody's looking at you. This is what it looks like as if somebody's looking this way, okay? Why are the ventricles of the brain formed the way they are? Why does the lateral ventricle need to make contact with the frontal lobe, the occipital and parietal lobe, and also send a projection back here so that it gets the visual sense sensory system of the brain? Why is it that it has to go all the way down into the temporal lobe as well, where the hippocampus is? Okay. Here I show you the third ventricle. This is a very interesting structure. It has these two little peaks here. One of these little peaks makes contact with the pituitary gland. The other makes contact with the pineal gland. Why? Here I show you an adult, the adult brain structures that are associated with the ventricular space. The lateral ventricles, the cerebral cortex, the basal ganglia, the hippocampus, the olfactory bulb, the basal forebrain, the amygdala, the corpus callosum, the fornix, the thalamus, the stria terminalis, the caudate, 
and the optic radiations. These are just a few of the structures of the brain that are all contacting the lateral ventricle. The third ventricle, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the infundibulum, the anterior commissure, and the pineal gland. The cerebral aqueduct makes contact with the midbrain. The fourth ventricle makes contact with the cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla. And the central canal goes all the way down the center of our spine. And remember, that's just on the inside of the brain. That's not even talking of what it's doing on the outside of the brain. So imagine that the CSF is a vehicle of transmission of information. Quickly, something gets into the CSF and can transmit that signal to multiple parts of the brain simultaneously. It does not use any synapses like the rest of the, uh, like the, rest of the brain and, the, and spinal cord do, and it can achieve total synchronization. One example of this is melatonin. It is synthesized from the tryptophan and serotonin. It is mostly synthesized in the pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small gland contacting the third ventricle. You see it right here. This is the third ventricle. You can actually see the pituitary gland as well. One of its major functions is for the production of melatonin, which is responsible for inducing ma and maintaining states of sleep and processes that show rhythmic variations, such as body temperature and appetite, as well as it's a very powerful antioxidant and detoxification method. Some people have looked at the distribution of melatonin from the pineal gland to various brain regions. There's very good evidence to actually suggest that melatonin is produced in the pineal gland, released into the CSF, and distributed throughout the entire ventricular system via the CSF. These are images from Dr. Russell Ryder at UT Health Science Center depicting this. In addition, because the CSF also covers the outside of the brain, there's distribution not only from the inside out, but also from the outside in. If you look at plasma, uh, plasma versus CSF melatonin concentrations with time of day, this is the night when the, the CSF concentrations raise 17 times compared to only six times in the blood. The global effects, therefore, of melatonin on the brain to help regulate and induce sleep, which is an altered state of consciousness, and other form and other functions in the brain may actually be through its effects via the CSF. Another fascinating compound that is being studied by a number of people now is DMT. Similar to melatonin, it is produced from the amino acid tryptophan, but it goes via the tryptamine pathway. What is DMT? DMT has been coined the spirit molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman, and in fact, he has an entire book on this. It is widespread throughout the plant kingdom. Trace amounts of it are found in mammals. DMT-containing plants are commonly used in shamanic rituals, and it can produce a powerful, psychedelic, near-death, and mystical experience. It is hypothesized to be released at birth, death, and during vivid dreams. Endogenous DMT has been found in the human body. It's been found in the blood at some pretty low concentrations. They're decently high. In the urine, in the feces, in the kidney, and in the lungs. It's also found in the CSF at some of the highest concentrations that have been found in a low number of people because it's difficult to actually find this molecule. In 2013, Rick Strassman, the same person who uh, published that book, found DMT in the rat pineal gland. So therefore, the high concentrations of DMT in the CSF are likely released from the pineal gland into the CSF to produce similar effects like melatonin, bathe the entire brain. Therefore, I'd like you to bring your attention back to that third ventricle, okay? It's a midline space. Its boundaries are the pituitary gland in front, the pineal gland in back, the hypothalamus, and the thalamus, okay? If you just go back and look at what all those things do, it's, it's incredible. The space in between these structures, this space in between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland has actually been called the Crystal Palace by Taoists, and it's been called the Cave of Brahma, by Hindu, uh, some Hindu yogic traditions. This space is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. It is my belief that this is the per place for the birth of the I am in physical form, where through dispersion of the energy within the fluid, our entire brain is simultaneously bathed with the differentiated energy from the source, providing the synchronous, unified experience of I am. Imagine, therefore,
Imagine, therefore, this fluid bathing the inside and outside of our brain, being a perfect vehicle to transmit information to the brain, whether that is melatonin to help us sleep or DMT to help us have vivid images and experience holistic states of consciousness, or as a fluid conductor of source energy to our physical bodies and to transmit the experience of I am, our beingness. Now, I'd like to do a little visualization with you. So I'd like you to take a moment or two and get comfortable in your seats. I put up here the images of the, third, of the, of the ventricles, so that if you just need a little help uh, Im imagining them from the inside. But remember, the CSF bathes the entire outside of the well. So close your eyes, feel your back and legs on the chair and your feet on the ground. Bring your attention to the middle of your brain. Imagine a straight line from between your ears and go to the center of that line into your third ventricle. A fluid-filled space in the middle of your brain. A radiant lake. A lake full of CSF. Sense the sensation of this radiant fluid. Now feel the source energy gathering. Sense the pulsation of the fluid throughout the entirety of the inside of your brain, around your brain, and all the way down the center of your spinal cord and around your entire spinal cord down to your tailbone. Sense the rhythmic pulsation of the fluid. Now return to the third ventricle, the radiant lake of CSF at the center of your brain. At the very back of this lake is your pineal gland, a pine cone shaped structure. Just like you create gentle waves in a bathtub, create some waves that gently hit your pineal gland to activate it. Feel the pineal gland release small amounts of DMT into your CSF. Envision the DMT bathing your entire brain, inside out and outside in. Feel the total synchronization of energy that is present within you. Who are you? Feel the rhythmic pulsation of your cerebrospinal fluid. And now slowly come back, taking a moment to feel your feet on the ground, your back making contact with the chair, and opening your eyes when you are ready. Orienting back to the room, to the light in the room, to the sounds in the room, and to your neighbors.